Jack Bogle is an American businessman who had an immense impact on the investing community. He's most known for starting the Vanguard Group, one of the most popular places to invest, and he's also the pioneer of index funds. Bogle was a huge advocate of low-cost investing, and he also wrote books like Common Sense on Mutual Funds and The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. But what a lot of people don't realize about Jack Bogle is he actually had a formula for calculating the expected return of a stock, and this is otherwise known as Bogle's valuation. A lot of people like this valuation because it's very straightforward and easy to understand and not too difficult to calculate. In fact, if we come over here, we can see Bogle stated that the expected return of a stock is equal to the earnings growth plus shareholder yield plus or minus the multiple expansion of a stock. Now, if that's confusing, don't worry. I'm going to take you step by step on how to use Bogle's valuation to calculate the expected return of a stock. Stick around. I think you'll learn a lot watching this video. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet. For example, the ticker data add-on is how I'm importing all the stock financials over here. If we click here, you can see using the ticker data add-on, this data is loading in. So if I were to change the stock ticker right here and hit enter, you can see all this data with earnings down here, shares outstanding, things like price to earnings ratio, all this data is going to automatically load in thanks to the ticker data add-on. Again, you can access ticker data at the link in the description. So let's go ahead and start from the very beginning on how to perform Bogle's valuation in this box right here. This is where we really want to be focused on. Everywhere else is just how we calculate the numbers to plug into this box. So let's go ahead and start from scratch. Now again, the three criteria we want to focus on is going to be the earnings growth, shareholder yield, and multiple expansion. And for this example, let's say we want to focus on Apple stock. So these are the three metrics we need to find to calculate Apple's expected return. So the very first metric that we're going to need is our earnings growth. This one's pretty straightforward. How much do we expect them to grow their earnings moving forward? Now, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. First off, one of the things we want to do is look at historical data for Apple. How fast have they been growing their earnings over the past few years? So if we come over here, you can see I've gone ahead and built this out. This is basically just raw data over the past few years. I was able to pull in easily with the ticker data function to tell us how fast their earnings have been growing. So we can see year over year growth it looks like 2016. It was down by around 10%. Next year up 11, next year up around 29. And so we can see year over year growth. But the compounded annual earnings per share growth rate during this time period was around 13%. So they grew earnings at a pretty high rate during this time period. Now to project future earnings growth, this isn't the only thing we should technically be looking at. We should also take into account things like expected industry growth and probably look at things like analyst expectations. And for example, one of the places we can look at analyst expectations is over on Seeking Alpha. I have a link to Seeking Alpha at the link in the description. But if we come over here and click on earnings and look at earnings estimates and scroll down, we can see the projected growth of their earnings per share moving forward over the next few years. And we can see we have quite a few different analysts for these next three years. So this can give us an idea of expected earnings growth over the next few years. So maybe after looking at different sources, you look at historical data, you look at analyst expectations, industry expectations, and come to your own conclusions. In this example, let's say we expect Apple's earnings to grow at a rate of about 9%. I'll plug in 9 right here, and you can see so far the expected return for Apple is sitting at about 9%. But now we need to find out what the shareholder yield is for Apple. Now, what is shareholder yield? Well, this is pretty simple. Shareholder yield is simply the dividend yield plus the buyback yield. So those are two direct ways you can reward shareholders. We have to keep in mind, free cash flow is earnings minus capital expenditures. And with free cash flow, there's five different things that a company can do. They can reinvest back into the business. They can pay down debt attempt mergers and acquisitions, and then the two final ways are ways they can directly reward shareholders immediately, and that's with share buybacks and dividend yields. Dividend yield is very straightforward. This is basically telling us how much you'll get directly paid in dividends from buying the stock. So for example, with Apple right now, dividend yield of 0.45%. If I invested $100 into Apple, they'd pay me about 45 cents. So obviously, Apple's not a big dividend payer. But what about the buyback yield? This is telling us what percent of the company's stock the company is buying back. So let's look at an example of this. If we come down here, we can see the historical data of how much stock Apple is buying back each year. For example, from 2018 to 2019, the company bought back almost 7% of its outstanding shares. The following year, around 6%, 2021, close to 4%, and the past couple of years, it looks like it was sitting right at 2.91%. So whenever a company is buying back its own stock, it's giving its shareholders more equity. So again, this is a direct way to reward shareholders. And what we can see is over the past few years, 
Apple's average buyback yield is sitting at about 4.5%. So in this scenario, we also want to look to see if management's put out any statements to see if they are still planning on buying back stock or maybe how much they're planning to buy back. And if you know anything about Apple, they are big believers in share buybacks. They recently announced the largest share buyback in history. So maybe we want to stick with this average buyback yield of about 4.5%. I'll plug this in right here. So we can see the shareholder yield for Apple in this example sitting at 4.95%. This is the shareholder yield, dividend yield plus the buyback yield. So what we'll do is we'll come up here and type in an equal sign and come over here and select our shareholder yield. So, so far our expected return for Apple is now sitting at 13.95%. But then the last element to this valuation is gonna be known as multiple expansion. Now, what does this even mean? Well, again, if we jump back over to Seeking Alpha, we have to understand a simple way to look at how a stock is currently being valued is by looking at multiples like the price to earnings multiple. If we come over here, right here, we can see the price to earnings ratio for Apple forward looking is sitting at about 33.83. And basically all this number is, is we're looking at the market price per share. So $224.47. And we're dividing this by the company's forward looking earnings per share, which looks like it's sitting at 6.69. So 224 divided by 6.69 gives us a price to earnings of 33.83. So this tells us how much investors are willing to pay for the earnings per share of a company. And right now they're willing to pay around 33.83 times the company's earnings. And compared to most other stocks in the S&P 500, this is a little bit on the high side, but that doesn't technically mean that the stock is expensive. Some companies that are so great could justify a higher price to earnings multiple. So when it comes to projecting a multiple expansion in Bogle's valuation, we have to ask ourselves, do we expect this price to earnings valuation to increase moving forward or decrease? And there's a couple of different ways we can decide what will happen. If we jump back over to Bogle's valuation, one of the things we can do is if we come down here, we can see the average price to earnings ratio for Apple from 2019 to 2023. It looks like it's sitting at about 26.07. But like we just saw over on Seeking Alpha, the forward looking price to earnings is 33.83. So that is a bit higher than their five year average. So it looks like the company's compared to how it's traded historically is a little bit more expensive right now than it has been over the past five years. So let's go ahead and plug that in 33.83. So after looking at this information, maybe we'll decide Apple actually isn't going to see multiple expansion. We think they're going to see multiple compression. Meaning moving forward, they're probably gonna trade at a lower price to earnings ratio. So maybe we think this multiple is gonna compress by around 5% moving forward. And if we come up here, we're gonna do minus 5% and hit enter. So now we have all the metrics we need to look at Bogle's valuation. We have our earnings growth at 9%, shareholder yield at about 5%, and then multiple expansion minus 5%. So we could see in the scenario of Apple, we're looking at an expected return of around 8.95%. Let's quickly look at another example. Maybe we wanna look at a more dividend focused paying stock. Let's look at a company like Altria Group, stock ticker MO. I'll go ahead and plug this in and remove these variables right here. Now again, we can see all this data is going to automatically update thanks to the ticker data add-on. And the first thing we'll focus on is shareholder yield. We can already see Altria pays a big dividend, a 7.56% dividend yield at the time of this recording, but now we need to update our buyback yield. So let's come down here and we can see Altria has been buying back shares, but not nearly the rate of Apple stock, but it looks like an average buyback yield of around 1.2%. So let's go ahead and plug that in 1.2%. So we can see Altria has a pretty high shareholder yield. They really like to directly reward their shareholders, but we can see the earnings per share growth for this company is quite a bit lower than Apple. The compounded annual earnings per share growth rate is sitting at about 6.95%. Now again, you should always do a little more digging than just looking simply at historical data. And in the case of Altria, if you actually look at what management is expecting, management has told us they expect to deliver mid single digit diluted earnings per share compounded annual growth rate all the way up until 2028. So that kind of gives us an idea of what they're shooting for. So maybe in the scenario, we go around 4% earnings growth. We'll plug that in. And then finally, we need multiples expansion. Now, if we look at the historical data here, we can see the number is gonna be a little bit off because they actually had negative price to earnings in 2019. So the average PE ratio here doesn't really make sense. Again, it's important to remember, valuation is an art, not a science. But what you can do is jump back over to Seeking Alpha. Let's come up here and plug in stock ticker MO. And if we look on valuation right here, there's a pretty cool feature. We can see the price to earnings for non-GAAP, trailing 12 months for Altria right now, is sitting at 10.53 while their five-year average is sitting at 9.83. So there was not really a huge difference here. If we look at it forward-looking, we can see the price to earnings non-GAAP, 
compared to the five-year average, sitting at about 9.61. So there's not a major difference. So actually in this scenario, maybe we think there's not gonna be any multiple expansion. So we could plug in zero right here, and in this scenario, we could see our expected return with Altria stock would be about 12.76%. Again, keep in mind, this is just an example. But using Bogle's valuation, you can see how quickly we can get a very straightforward expected return of a stock. It takes into account the three key metrics that drive long-term shareholders' returns, and that's earnings growth, shareholder yield, and multiple expansion. So like always, if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this valuation down in the comments down below. And like always, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.